What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Skullface, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the DNA Susano, which is their bludgeon. Bludgeon? Is it bludgeon? Bludgeon? Is it, what is it? I'm not entirely sure. One thing I am sure about is we're going to go through this figure and we're going to start with accessories. Let's go. So he comes with these three swords, uh, all like in the done in a samurai style, which is cool. It keeps with the theme. Beautiful sculpt work down the blade and on the handle, especially the, I'm guessing, Japanese lettering there. I'm by no means, uh, what is it, a cryptographer? I don't know. I'm not gonna be able to know what that means or what language it is, but I'm gonna guess Japanese, keeping with the samurai theme. And then uh, these two smaller ones, silver paint on the blade, as is this one. It also comes with a scabbard or sheath. What difference does it make? Every time I say one, somebody corrects me on the other. Anyway, you know what it is. It's got silver paint here and then it can slide in. I'm gonna cut this in because it's hard to get it lined up. You have to have it lined up just right and you obviously can't see what's going on inside that cylinder, but there it is. It has a port here which you can plug in and he can hold the swords kind of, we'll show it. Now this sword, he holds perfectly well. However, on the other side, we have this hand. I'll give you a better idea, I hope. You see that slot? That's where it goes in, so to speak. And it is very small. And I'm gonna try one more time, but oh, oh, I got it. I haven't been able to get it as of yet, but there. So we will hold it, it's just, it's a very small tab. You have to be uh, really right on the money to kind of line it up or you're not gonna have any luck. That's the first time I've been able to get it and I, I just, maybe these lights helped, but there you have it. So here on his hip armor, this tab flips up. You can have it flat or showing. And then you just take this and plug it in there and then he has it there and he has that option on both sides. On the back, you can press this button which spring loads this, exposing two more sheaths, which can then hold those little swords. He has this gun, which he can hold by bringing down this lever and using the same system to plug into the hand. Just make sure you line it up right. It is tricky to get this third finger through, but you can, and then the other index finger just kind of lays alongside the side of the gun, which I think is fine. Now, also, you can remove this whole piece from here, rotate this barrel around, it is a bit tight, but there, and then take these two pieces and split them apart, and now you can utilize this with tank mode. They can plug in here, and here. The gun can plug in there. He comes with a few gray pieces of plastic. I'm guessing these are screw hole covers. I'm not messing with them. Uh, I'll explain why in a second. And then two antennas which can be utilized in tank mode. And your antennas, they're a half circle cut. So they have to go a particular way. But they can plug in there. Let me raise the camera up a little bit. in there. Then he has an alternate face piece. Uh, the detailings are the same. We'll talk about that when we go through robot mode. Obviously, this would be the one that I would choose. I think we all know why. And I'll show you how to work that. So, per the instructions, you keep your thumb underneath the chin here, remove this face piece, and then you can apply this one. Not a, uh, not a problem whatsoever. So, first and foremost, this is on loan to me from Lance. He sent this to me ASAP. He actually hit me up months in advance to let me know that he was getting it. Uh, wanted to know if I had one lined up. I told him no, and he's been keeping me up to date on it ever since uh, to include like when he got shipping notices and everything. Like he, He's really been uh, pretty awesome about everything in regards to that. Uh, this is, I will say... There's some there's a fiddliness to this immediately that right out of the box didn't sit right with me. It doesn't mean that there's not some cool stuff going on. There is. But let's talk about it because it does have its issues. So the head is on a ball peg. You get up to there, down to there, and then a swivel. 
The sculpt of the heads, both of them, I believe, are beautiful. And they're painted really well. To include red eyes on this one and the teeth, no, no red eyes on this one and straight teeth. There is some white paint on here that's shipping, but it is also panel lined. So I think that needs to be pointed out. That's a lot of extra love TLC in regards to paint that we don't usually see. The rest of this, I can't really, uh, the gold is, I think, painted, but I can't really tell what else is. I think the white is painted. It's hard to say, um, but I, I think there is a fair amount of paint on this head. As we move lower down the figure, it, uh, we, we, we lose a bit of that, but I think on the head sculpt, there is a lot. On the torso, we have this brown that's painted on here and here. We have the black parts that are painted on, the gold that's painted on, and the gold and brown that's painted on down here. There is a waist swivel, but it is very limited. Now, you can remove the backpack, uh, and it's actually the first step of the transformation. And I might have to fiddle with this a little bit because since this is on loan to me and it does feel mighty fiddly, the last thing I want to do is break it. So we'll keep it on for now and I'll take a closer look at it later. And when I do, we'll take a look at the waist swivel. This piece here, every, uh, well not every section, I guess every two sections are independently hinged. Unfortunately, underneath it's not a pretty sight. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of gentlemen suffer from that same issue. But the gold here is painted, and so is the silver, and that's all works well. That's all works well. That doesn't sound right, but you know what I'm saying. Over here, it looks to me like we have orange paint on green. No, I'm going to guess that's green paint on orange plastic. Yes, definitely. And then gold paint added on. A lot of this stuff has little hinges. You can kind of move it to your heart's desire. There's silver paint here, silver paint here. There are a lot of accents. Silver paint around the, uh, the edge of this circular joint here. The shoulders are on a ratcheted. Oh, no, they're not ratcheted. They're just hinged. But you can get up to there. And then there is an additional disc hinge almost there that's ratcheted so you can get the arm all the way out is it the prettiest no and with this shoulder in it's a lot more limited but you can cheat a little bit and kind of get everything that you want and i don't even know if it's technically a cheat because this is designed this way and then the pistons that are inside are even painted to kind of give attention to the sculpt so i definitely appreciate that there is a bicep swivel at the top and there is another one here at the elbow and then there the elbow itself is double jointed with a little forearm uh, that gets you 180 degrees basically all the way around. I mean, it only gets you 90 out, but then you get an extra basically 90. And then it has these here, which you can have out or you can have in, once again, depending on your sensibilities. The tracks here are also independently uh, articulated, so you can get some more dynamic stuff there, like, you know, blowing in the wind or what have you. I mean, I guess it'd be a pretty strong wind. There are paint accents along the way, some greens, some silvers, uh, a lot of that kind of stuff, so that all works fairly well. The wrists are on a swivel, and the fingers are individually articulated, and they're not done extremely well. It's a very much a, a KFC kind of approach, ball pegs at the knuckles and then hinges for the uh, fingers. The hinges work fine. Actually, and the, the tips of the fingers aren't. It's just this first knuckle, but it still works fine. The ball pegs, I have had a few snap out on me, and they are a bit fiddly. Same here, except it comes to a hinge at the first knuckle and then a second hinge at the second knuckle. Whew, there's a lot to talk about here. All right, same for the other side. So we can get the arms out of the way. Let's just move them to make up for for uh, our space. So you have these side panels. Now, this stays true to the samurai theme. I think it works fairly well. This is orange paint on top of green, and it is chipping everywhere. All along the, the nuts and bolts here, which probably should have been painted anyway, uh, with a gold, and then a little bit around the corners here and there. These are on armatures. There's a There are double hinge, actually they're triple hinge maybe, but double hinge that you can do here. So you can get them out to there, and that will allow for a little articulation in the hips. These also, same type of deal, individually hinged, so you can get those out of the way to get your universal joint about out to there. So not the greatest range in the world, um, but he is like a bulky, but he is also samurai, so I don't know how I feel about that, but that's about as far out as they go. What's more problematic is their forward and back range, which is even more limited, and that's because of the space here. So if you keep your eye on this joint here and then the tracks, this is straight, that's all you get. 
So little to no forward motion or backward motion whatsoever. That's a bummer. When I did, whenever I do reviews, I never look at other people's reviews or other stuff so that I can walk in with a clean palette, if you will. But since I did the review, I've been looking at pictures online and I've seen pictures with his legs up forward. To me, it looks like they're off at a bit of an angle. Maybe there's a way to drop down those joints so that they will rotate up so that you can get the full rotation out of them. All I can tell you is that I didn't see it. The materials on this thing didn't make me want to push anything to its limits and I didn't want to break it. You know, so if it does rotate by manipulating something in order to get it to work, cool. Strike that criticism from this review. But I'm just saying that most of the pictures I look at, it looks like it's maybe over a little bit and then up, but not straight up. All right? Just don't give me a hard time. All right? I don't want any monkey business. Okay? But don't you want this banana? No, I don't. I don't want that banana. But don't you want this banana? I don't. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't. You know you want this banana. <laughs> Green paint there, and it looks like a gunmetal finish actually on that. All this this gunmetal here it looks great, and then the green paint here as well, which brings us to our thigh swivel, which does work. It's a double jointed knee, which gets you at least 90 degrees, probably a bit more. But it does start to become very fiddly the more you mess with it. Part of that is because you have these more independently uh, articulated tracks here on the back of the foot. Green paint, silver paint, gold paint, all that works well except, you know, the overall nature of this guy is just extremely fiddly. All right, for the feet we do have the silver paint here and then for the ankles you have a rocker a really well done rocker and this is die cast down here but we do have more paint chipping and then we have a toe hinge up and then a heel spur that can swivel out and it is padded on the bottom which I do like that's a nice touch um, no real ankle tilt you get a little bit up and down but nothing really most of which, which are, most of that you're gonna get on this toe hinge and that's about it I'll show you the back of them there's a lot of good stuff here you know, it's just, it's funny, like right out of the box, I wasn't impressed and my buddy Joe was here and, and Joe was kind of impressed and we debated it a bit and then like going through it, I have definitely noticed a lot of TLC. It's just the actual build, it does seem a little like rattly and, and it feels unkept. There's also a swivel here at the knee if you want an additional swivel. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's not, it's not the best, but display purposes posed and such, you should be fine. Let's take a look at size comparison. So he's about the size of an MP Seeker and he towers over a, a Hasbro Deluxe. So although I don't think his aesthetic is necessarily masterpiece, I think that he will look good on a masterpiece shelf if you want a bludgeon representation or bludgeon, bludgeon, bludgeon. We're gonna pull that out. And then here, we're gonna straighten these up and spin them 180. Ooh, I hope this isn't a sign of things to come. Am I right? So we'll do it here as well. Spin those out 180. And then from what I can tell, you need to rotate the arms up. The arms do swivel here as well. I don't know if we talked about that in, in uh, articulation, but there's this little piece in here. And from what I can tell, it's you want the half circle element of it tight up against this top of the shoulder. Push the head in and as you continue to push it in, rotate it back as far as you can. These arms are, as like I said, we've talked about before, there's a lot of moving pieces. So what we wanna do is straighten out here. That's there. We want to rotate here and then also rotate here so that that sits up in there I don't know I, I know I'm just saying here and there and it's not very descriptive but the wheel of the tank sits in there we're gonna spin this so that the two screws are facing us and then underneath it on this cylinder we want to see the pin and then that should put this on the outside and we're gonna twist the hand up that will get this lined up so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side we're going to sit that out we're going to move this circular drum up into that cavity so to speak 
and then we're going to rotate down there spin at this joint until we see the screws and then at this joint until we see the pin we're going to keep this let's see hand out and i think we want this i'm not sure let me just double check that yeah we're going to want to have this joint exposed which will put our hands this way and then we're going to make fists which I probably just should have done beforehand and would have saved us a little bit of time. But like that. And then we're gonna flip that piece down and we're gonna keep that on that double hinge out like that. So we'll do it on this side as well. Keep that so we can see the hinge. Palm in, fist made. And then this cap flap will cover down as well now i removed the face because this next step i just as i was going through it it's just it, it's just too risky to to chance it but what we need to do is get these arms over top of this head now utilizing your double jointed elbow you're going to get this around and you actually have to pull out at the forearm which will give you the extra space which is something I've never seen before at least I don't think and then you're gonna move the shoulder up as you do keep in mind you can maneuver this shoulder joint to get you the angle that you need in order to make this possible to tab this tab there into that slot there or that whatever and that's what you're looking for so we'll do it again on this side we're going to rotate on this double joint. Let me, I know we're not doing a good job of showing what's going on here. Let me adjust. We're going to pull out the forearm. And it is stressful. There it is. And then rotate the shoulder up. Tab in our two pieces that we talked about. Ooh, come on, girl. Do not break on me, please. And then this is going to tab together. And I'll get that cleaned up. The tracks lay down flat. And then this should be a little bit better lined up, obviously. And then this piece comes around and tabs in. I'm a little out of sorts, but there, there it goes. That piece there, hope that was in frame. Next, we're gonna lift this up. We're gonna pull these out. And then kind of like Quake Wave, you need to move this thigh out on both sides. And it's tough. All right, so I've loosened it up a bit. So we're gonna push those out. Now we're going to rock this piece up here. We're going to collapse the feet. We're going to slide this side part of the foot up uh, just a little bit. And we're going to collapse this foot on top of itself. And then we can flip the heel spur around. So I'll show that again. Rock this No, we're good. Why is this not moving? There, just tight. Like it's, it's just tolerance different on each side. Um, collapse the foot, rotate this piece up, and then flip the foot up. Rotate the heel spur. This is too tight. Around. All right, so now we're gonna rock these pieces back down and then we're gonna swivel this orange section around. You can bring this piece down too.
and then you want to turn it so that the orange, both sides of the orange are facing up. And then we want to take these wheels and flip them up so that this is all kind of aligned. And then you're going to flip these treads around and connect them with the upper treads. And I might have to do this off camera. I feel like I'm saying that a lot in this review, but it's just, it's a very ambitious uh, piece. And I don't know if it's built to handle its own ambition, but I'll get these connected. Now we need to extend the body all the way up, which is basically on two mechanisms. You can keep this up. We're gonna undo this latch here, which will allow these pieces to flip out to the side. And then we're gonna bring these armatures up and around and connect them here, which I'll probably have to change positions to get, but let's see if, if, well, that's where you want to snap them in is right here. I just can't, I can't do both at the moment. Flip this whole assembly now back around and you want to clear it and then make it so that these teeth interlock. I'll be back. And then your last step is to take this piece and you can see this came undone and I'm just not messing with it. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm, people can say whatever they want, but uh, I had to, I'm not going to replace this for somebody, you know, so I don't want to break it. Flip this around and then these are supposed to, uh, this is stressed, that tabs into here and here. Um, I'm going to have to finagle that at, off camera as usual. And then all of these pieces are supposed to interlock. I doubt that I'm gonna be able to get that, but that's that. And then your last step is to put the turret on. Once the turret's on, you can take the scabbard and you can insert that into there, flip that up, and there's your tank. I'll get it armored up, we'll take a look at it. So there it is in tank mode. There it is next to Tiger Track, so we can get that out of the way. And look, these treads are like, I mean, they're almost next to impossible. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm simply not comfortable. I'm simply not comfortable. But be that as it may, I think that, uh, I think it's, if, if you can get it lined up, it's fine. But this is ratcheted up top, so that's nice. And I think it looks cool. I think it looks wicked. I think there's a lot of, you know, intimidation factor with this, but it's not worth getting to this mode at all. Uh, the paint accents and stuff look cool. The, the how the samurai armor kind of lines up on the side of the tank, like, you know, typical, you know, iconic nature of the character, that all works. So I think there's a number of things here that are cool and interesting and work. It just doesn't have the build to pull off the ambition of the engineering it's requesting of the user. That's the bottom line. Final thoughts wise, let me also say first that there are um, a lot of bad decisions that I've made today. Maybe transforming this guy was a bad decision for the day. So I apologize for the, the transformation issues. It's just, it's a complicated unit to try to do. It's fiddly as the day is long and it's it's relatively obnoxious in that regard. Shout out to Jeff, he just left. It's like 2.30 in the morning and I'm trying to finish this review. Uh, he was in the area, he's around town, he swung by, hung out for a bit and then, and then went on his way and now we gotta finish this. So let's talk about the bad. The bad is mainly that it's too, I think I said this earlier, but it's too ambitious for its build. They expect for a lot of things to happen and it's just not built well enough for those things to happen and the engineering isn't smooth enough nor kind of lock and key enough if you know what I mean. Like usually with good engineering you need the things to move a particular way to lock into a particular position in order for everything to line up and kind of come together. But there's a lot of kind of give here between different places of the transformation, which makes getting things tabbed all in at the end very difficult. But that's not the end of its issues. 
There's paint chipping. The materials feel light and you need them to be a bit sturdier. There's articulation issues. There is no waist swivel as we saw because the thing expands, which I didn't even think about. But there is no waist swivel. This thing is obnoxious too, but I, I do I do kind of dig the the spring element of it. Uh, let's see what else. I was very afraid of breaking numerous things along the way because it just doesn't feel like it can hold up to its own expectations of what it expects you to do performance wise in order to get it into the modes that it needs to be in. There are some positives though. It pretty much tries to check all of my boxes. Like it has die cast, it has paint, it has great accessories. It has some unique elements to its transformation. Like it just feels like they really try to do right by a lot of collectors, but it just doesn't ultimately stand up to its own precedence. And that's an issue. So ultimately I can't recommend this on good faith. You know, if you like the sculpt and you want them to stand there stoically and look pretty, you'll be happy. If you want them to do much more than that, you're gonna be less than satisfied. At least that's how it is in my opinion. And I just can't think of too much more to say. I do wanna thank Lance for the opportunity for me to take a look at it. I do appreciate that. I always feel bad when people send me stuff from their collection and I have to tell other people that I don't think they should buy it. <laughs> like, it's just not a good feeling, you know what I mean? And I'm exhausted, so I'm not doing a skit. Uh, it's just not in the cards tonight. It's 2.30 in the morning. I need to relax, but I wish I could recommend this and I just can't. And hopefully you understand why. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching until next time. Take care.